Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. I'm Anna Gibbs, and I'm here with my friend, Jen Marr. And I'm excited for you to be able to get to know her because she's definitely what I would describe as a force of nature. She's been in business for a long time. She's an entrepreneur, like me, probably a serial entrepreneur. And she's moved into fully into the realm of coaching as well. And she is a soulful prosperity coach. And I can't wait for you to unpack that with everybody this morning, Jen, and just get into talking a little bit about what brought you to this. And I know we're going to have a lot of fun together. So welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. This is great. I've been following your journey. Really good stuff. And yeah, excited to be here. We've known each other a long time. It's got to be like 13 years. Yeah, I think that so I met you when I first started doing some coaching for Keller Williams, which led me to getting hired. And that was probably in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So so you're right on 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to tell you, I was instantly drawn to your energy. I saw another person in the room who just obviously loves people and had this high frequency. And that has never changed. And I think that's something a lot of people could say about you. And I think you've learned to use it as a tool, right? That's what we do. We we use it as a way to bring people into our space and also connect with them too. Absolutely. Right now, I, I would say in the past two years, I've had a real awakening and finally can answer the question, who am I and why am I here? And I consider myself what's called a way shower and So my goal is to be able to help my on paper goal is to help over a million people by next leap year, level up to the highest version of themselves, tap into that highest version of themselves for themselves and their businesses. Businesses have a soul too. And both, both need to be nourished and both need to make you feel good. And that's the point of life is to feel good. It's not about this stress and the anger and the separation and all the other stuff. So what brought me here, I had a very challenging childhood, which led into very challenging teenagehood. And I spent my 20s addicted to heroin and cocaine crack and wound up on the streets and had my daughter Olivia under the most difficult circumstances you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And while I was pregnant with her, and that, that got me out. As soon as I was pregnant, I was like, okay, this is not really like a a wake up call. The reason why I ended up where I was not, it was very unique in a lot of ways. I would, I felt this calling always and felt this disconnectedness, which was actually a connectedness, if that makes any sense. And I just didn't really fit in and struggled. And I had no role models. My mom was a single mom who both her parents basically abandoned her and all of her relatives were like very dysfunctional alcoholics. They all died by the time they were 50. My mom is the oldest living on both sides. Like she's lived longer than anybody has in both sides of her family. Wow. And she did the best that she could. My mom and dad were divorced since I was, you know, a baby and I had a lot of trauma as a child. So it was more like I didn't, know I could go up and I knew whatever was going on, what life I was living and what was around me was not for me. And I guess the freedom was what I was attracted to. And just that's a whole nother episode. But so an awakening, maybe, I guess, but I was still lost. I was lost for a long time, but it did make me have a purpose and taking care of this baby was that purpose. And so I got my real estate license while I was pregnant and got right into the real estate industry and became a top producer right away. But I, it was always, it was not my calling, although I loved it and I was good at it. I got bored and I've done so many different things in real estate. I've yeah, been you in, have a probably what, 25 years in, in the industry? About 28, yep. 28. So it did support you. And oh, absolutely. You grew up raised, to leadership. Yeah. I raised two beautiful children pretty much on my own. Mm-hmm. I really didn't stay married long to my second 
my first husband. And, but I did really well. I overcame that addiction, overcame that. And then I went into this like superwoman mode and became an industry leader or became a, a leader in my community. And, but I didn't really understand who I was and what my purpose was. I achieved a lot of great success. I was team leader. I was an operating partner candidate. I was an independent broker. Then I was a partner in an independent brokerage. And then the pandemic hit. And I had been in coaching before, but never, something happened to me during the pandemic. Something just clicked. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there was still a void. Now I got involved with, I've actually got stumbled onto the monastery here in Kent, New York. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's beautiful, a Buddhist monastery. And I stumbled into this seven year Buddhist teacher training program. I was just okay, trying wait to- wait a second. Out. I have to take a pause. <laughs> Hold on. So no, I have not been to this monastery, but I don't know if anyone stumbles into that. Sounds like a major commitment. I was so yeah. I, I was. You know, not, when you were you know? when you were describing your trajectory through your career, that's what I came into my mind. I was thinking, what was she searching for? And you just acknowledged that. Yeah. So I stumbled into this. It's about maybe eighteen years ago, and I became an actual ordained Buddhist priest and an ordained Buddhist teacher and a meditation teacher. And so I had this spiritual practice, but I wasn't able to bring it all together. And I really was denying or so ashamed and had so much guilt of who I was that I realized just recently. So let me go backwards really quick. So, so I had this spiritual practice. I had the success in business. I was, I was an okay mom. I could have been better. I'm, you can all say that, and I'm sure, I'm right? An amazing mom now, and the world's <laughs> maybe maybe you are too. So we can hold the title together. Yeah, my kids laugh at me because they're like, "Who are you?" I can't believe you let them do that because I'm a great yeah. Gigi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So before the pandemic, I should say, I got back into coaching with John Chetlock, who's literally one mm -hmm. of the best coaches in the real estate industry. Shout out to well, John. Hi, John. And he really taught me to, you need to focus on your physical health. Mm -hmm. Now I was drinking a lot. That was my escape. That was my crutch. I didn't have alcohol related issues necessarily. I have in my life, but I didn't for a long time. And then I just came up with this. I started doing visualization and I came up with this seven year plan and would visualize it really hard. And the beach house, which I have is on it. It's pretty much everything, the husband, the, the, the everything on my seven year plan, I was able to check off. And so I'm on this high, I'm now married, I have my beach house, I'm doing really well, I'm really well respected, I have a good reputation, blah, blah, blah. So and then you would say you're manifesting your version of a perfect life. And I did, I did. And then I had the world's worst business breakup you could ever imagine. And I will never say anything bad about my ex-business partner, but I did not have everything in writing. I made myself vulnerable. I also made some huge mistakes. Now, in hindsight, like transparency and communication, having difficult conversations, it's not crucial. You can't live without it, yeah. right? And a lot of that comes from confidence and comes from things that I still didn't have, believe it or not. So before this business breakup, pandemic hits, and I triple down with my coaches. So I get really rigid, lose 40 pounds. I end up taking over the whole company. I used to just have the commercial and Putnam County end up running the whole thing. We're killing it. And I'm in like what I think is the best place I've ever been spiritually, physically, mentally, but I didn't know it yet, but I still was not whole. Mm -hmm. I still hadn't healed from a lot of the trauma. Still hadn't, you know, dealt with a lot of things. And so when this happened, and it happened in an instant, so my 400 and something thousand dollars income, gone. My investment, gone. Big investment, gone. In one day, just gone. My reputation, people were out there saying all kinds of things. My reputation, which I realized means nothing, actually, it's all about who you are, not what people say. And all of it. But still, so thank God, though, Anna, I had really been walking the talk. 
Mm-hmm. I quit drinking. This isn't about quitting quit drinking, right? It's really what are your mooring lines? What are the things that are yeah. holding you back? What are the things that you are using as a crutch? Right. And there are a lot of things people use it. You talked about it, having your battle with drug addiction, alcohol, people use food, they use relationships. Yeah, right? There's a lot of things. Gambling. We can use, right. We can use as a, social game. media. Yes. Netflix, you, you name it. There's so many ways to use as a crutch and to just avoid and and, and avoid and numb us out right yeah. i think a lot of people are using things and we've all been there me too right yeah. and we catch it some of us can catch it and we realize wow i'm just trying to numb myself right now yes. and what is what am i avoiding what am i avoiding yeah. and it could be something as simple as the laundry or that statistical project that you you have to bring to work on Monday or it could be major life decisions but that's usually I what's think it's to... growth most of the time I think a yeah. lot of it are avoiding growth right so I really believe in this as you're either expanding or contracting and right. most of the world is contracting right now and that's why they're in so much pain and I believe in the integrity gap right so you can draw a line of where you are and what you where your potential is and where your potential is and then where you are, and then the difference between where you are and the where the potential is. Right. Non-action there is where depression, anxiety, anger, sadness, all that stuff comes from, the yeah. inaction, and you're contracting, and it's painful, right? There's a, what is it, Anise Nin, I always say the name wrong, but a beautiful poet and writer has a quote where the day came where she realized the pain of remaining close closed tightly as a bud was a lot more than bl- blooming beautifully. Right. Totally paraphrased good. and not said correctly, yes. but you yeah. got it. And it's until the pain becomes really great, right? Greater than the perceived pain of not taking action, it, you may not change. And sometimes things happen that cause us to getting pregnant, you mentioned, having the bottom fall out of a business partnership that yeah. you didn't expect. So those things are sometimes, I believe, the universe's way of trying to finally get our attention. Absolutely. Because I had been, look, I had outgrown my business partner a long time ago and I was afraid or I didn't have the confidence or I just also unearthed the pattern. So when this happens, I immediately was okay, more than okay. I was like, okay, great. I can go now do what makes me happy. I can launch this coaching company and do for me and and take care of myself, put myself first. And so I did just that. But I unearthed the pattern with the relationship with my business partner, the relationship with my husband, relationship with some other people and myself in general. And I unearthed something called a shadow why. Everybody knows about your why. I don't know if you know anything about shadow work, but shadow work is the most, so I did two years of shadow work or 18 months, I should say. I did three programs, got certified in it since this happened. And I did the most healing that I have ever done. So shadow work is where you look at the sides of yourself that you deny, that you're ashamed of, that you feel guilty about, or or also your projections, right? When you look at other people and you're judging them, that's usually something inside of you. Like whenever yeah. you're triggered. Whenever you're judging, whenever you're like, oh, look at her. Who does she think she is? Or I can't believe they just did that. That's disgusting. Right? You're really, these are parts of yourselves that you are reflecting, projecting, and all these things. So I did this yeah, shadow. So do, you, do you also believe, I? we talked about this a little bit, you and I, before a few weeks ago. And I actually have had some other conversations with some people and did a little bit more research on it. I think it's also, too, that part of us that we keep in the shadow that is really the key to our full expression of ourselves, right? Our full potential that we're afraid to connect with because it it is so powerful and it can change the trajectory that we're on. Some shadows are light shadows. Some Mm -hmm. shadows are dark shadows. Now I had more light shadows. I've always been afraid to be graceful. So I curse and hang out with the boys and I'm tough. I I know I've seen you in action. I get it. Yeah. And, and then I had this persona, this whole persona of this party, fun, like out, doing everything, taking everything. Anna, I just want to be alone 
and reading and like walking barefoot and watching sunsets and sunrises. That's who I am. I created that whole persona. I'm going to say this one coach to another, what I'm hearing and connecting with you and what I'm seeing too. And I described you as a force of nature. Yeah. Which has always been true and still is today. It's just how you've decided to use your energy and force, right? At different times. I think that, you know, when I first met you, I told, it's funny how this is all lined up because, you know, we didn't discuss anything ahead of time. We just wanted this to be a, a really organic conversation. But the way I described my reaction to first meeting you, right, that energy. But now listening to the way you just described, you know, yourself, I think you were tapping into masculine energy a lot. Survivor. Yes, we all possess both mm-hmm. masculine and feminine energy. Again, this is probably in alignment with the whole term around shadow work. And at that point in your career, I think that it felt like you needed to really pull that out to be accepted in the industry, especially in commercial real estate, which is still predominantly men. And I think a lot of women struggle with how to really access their true authentic self and feel confident in using that and saying, this is enough. Yes, there's always opportunity to dial it up, dial it back, mirror match Mm -hmm. and connect with people. But I think it's really about getting comfortable in your own skin, which it feels like you are. I I call it wholeness. Mm -hmm. So this shadow work helps me to become whole. And becoming whole isn't just about being able to admit, yes, I was a drug addict and lived on the streets and did experience some really bad things. That's not what becoming whole is. Becoming whole is unearthing or discovering the gift on the other end. Mm. To every negative, there is a positive, And to every positive, there is a negative. That is science. It is nature. It is the law. Yeah. You cannot change that. So when you are denying or hiding, and so this is where doing the shadow work, I on earth, and I'm, it's going to be my second book, right? I have a real estate book, but it'll be my second book that I'm writing in this realm of uh, social prosperity coach. The first one is called becoming anti-fragile and be coming out soon. But so it is exciting. The shadow why. So I've not only survived what, probably over 90% of people would not survive. And if they did survive, they would not be living any kind of quality of the life that I have. Thank God. And I'm very grateful. So that masculine energy really started back then to survive. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into the business world, I learned how to use these traits. But what was driving me was to prove to the world and to myself that I was not that person. That's not a sustainable why. It's not sustainable. And it it had to blow up. And especially because I now know I am here for a reason. I truly have, and I have already, even a hot mess, even with all the wrong reasons, I have helped so many people in my life. So many people. I spent the entire pandemic Literally, it was like March 17th where, or March 19th when the world shut down, whatever the day was, I was at my dining room table in heels, dressed and helping dozens and dozens of businesses every day. It's just who I am. Yeah. And now, but you can only help so far when your cup is not full, right? Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I learned when you are a giver right? And so I was a giver, but I was driven by the wrong things. So all I did was give. And so the taking was the things that weren't wholesome for me, like drinking or binge watching or whatever. That's how I was filling myself up. I did, thank God, have the meditation and have these things, but it almost negates in some ways. That's not to say you can't have, listen, tomorrow, there's some couch potato time in my calendar. Oh, okay? absolutely. We all need yeah. a few hours of Netflix once absolutely. a week. Absolutely. But not you know, to escape. Not to escape. Yeah. And I just came back from the Dominican Republic almost three weeks. I didn't take one day off. Now, I walked on the beach every day for two hours, but I'm so engaged and so excited and so loved. Whereas when I was at the top of my career, when I would go there, and it's not about the drinking, it's about the escape, I would just be partying. 
yeah you know, for the week that i was there i was never there for three weeks but now i go because it's for me i work from there and i have my deep reflection so coming into my wholeness and not only accepting and being okay but truly loving and treating every aspect of myself just like i would my granddaughter who would come to me with yes. or my daughters and loving. If we could only love ourselves as much as we love others. If we could you only like talk you. to ourselves the way yes. that we would never, I would never say things to you. You can't do that. What do you think you're doing? But we say those things to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And so you went on, you really embarked on a journey of even more self-love because you said something a, a few minutes ago, like you thought you had done all the work. And, I know. and even now the triggers that show up and there are events that happen that force us to sometimes re-examine or we find ourselves reconnecting to old wounds and old feelings and old thoughts. So this is how it, it should be pictures. I think it was a Debbie Ford book, Dark Side mm -hmm. of the Light Pictures. And so she describes it as two ways, two things that I just absolutely love. One, picture yourself that you are an electrical panel and there's outlets all over this electrical panel and each outlet represents a trait, a virtue, a characteristic, positive ones, negative ones. And you're walking around vulnerable with these, all of these open because it, the ones that you haven't accepted and looked at both sides. Mm -hmm. Every morning I burn a white candle and a black candle. And this just reminds me to love both because they oh. don't exist without each other. And so you're walking around with this electric panel and you're just letting people plug into you all, all day long. And so when you can plug in your own and it gets to, becomes a beautiful circle at the yin and yang or however yeah. you want to envision it, infinity, then you're not triggered. It just is. You can walk by and or you can see a behavior that you might not like, but it doesn't affect you. Yeah, you. you know, that that could be a whole other episode too. It's really working to move out of judgment. Yeah. When I coach clients, that's one of the things that tends to come up a lot. And of course, I'm working with different clients for different reasons, but mm -hmm. it seems like that comes up a lot where I'm saying, okay, listen, if you could just look at it with no judgment, it's not good or bad, it's not right or wrong, it just is, what will so you take from it now? Exactly. So here's another way Debbie Ford described it. And she passed away a few years ago. She's yes. an amazing Yes, teacher. I'm a big fan of Debbie Ford too. So she also described it like picture when you're a little girl or a little boy and your life is a castle. It's this big, beautiful. And it was amazing because this is a reoccurring dream for me. So when I heard this, I was like, oh, your life is this big, beautiful castle with all kinds of rooms all kinds of just different rooms anywhere your imagination and your creativity can take you and then you go to church one sunday and you hear don't do this and don't be that so you shut off that room and then you hear from your mother you don't want to be this you don't want to do that good girls don't do this good boys don't do that and you shut off that room and then you go out into school and then you go out into college and you get into the work world and then you're trying to fit in and you're trying to conform. The next thing you're living in a studio or a two bedroom wow. apartment with all of these shut off rooms that you don't even remember, but yet they're draining you still. They still take energy. They still take this and they're ignored. And the more that they're ignored, the more they cause because now they're in disrepair and they're shambling and they're falling apart. Right. So our goal is to take all that back. So let's talk a little bit about your coaching practice. So soulful prosperity, right? You're working with individuals, you work with organizations, you work with companies, right? And so I think it's important for the listener to understand that you're really coaching the whole person or the whole organization and that there is room for soulfulness. Yeah, business. there is room for this in the way you approach life. Yeah. Because I think what I've learned over the last, I don't know, 20 years, I've, I've probably been on really my personal development journey for about 25 years, is that we need to create flow and connection through all these different parts of who we are, right? It's about integrating yeah. all the parts. Yeah, and I think that for some people, right, there, there's not an awareness, there's not a consciousness to that. And so you really help create that flow. And 
Tell me why you chose the term prosperity to go with that. Because I realized, so my integration really just began. And so even when I started my coaching company, at first I was like all business. And then I was like, no, I want to go spiritual. And now yep. I realized I can integrate it. Gary Keller always talked about full throttle and then mm -hmm. stop. And I put it so gracefully and say balance is bullshit. It's, it is though. It is. It's very, right? you can't really balance. It's yeah. So it is about the integration. You nailed it and, and the flow. And so look, I can only teach what I have learned. And I can tell you that I have now true joy, true freedom. And listen, my financials aren't back where I want them to be. And I have lots. There's so much breakage from my healing in my life. That's yeah. not simple and not easy. So it's not about, you get what I'm saying. It's just- The prosperity is, piece is not about making it, seven it figures is. necessarily, it but, but it's more than that too. Because I honestly feel we have a responsibility to earn. Yes, yeah. thank you for saying that because no. that's a whole other thing where people How are am I so supposed afraid to help of money. How am I supposed to help a million people by then over a million people by the yes. next week year if I'm stressed out about bills? Right. I can't, you can't give what you don't can have. I be the best mother in the world? How can I be the best grandmother? How can I be if I have this? And unfortunately, we live in this 3D world, or is it 2D, 3D, where we have an economy and that's how it works. And so we have to Absolutely. be- Absolutely. And, and it comes back to the judgment piece again, right? Where some people are still struggling with really being comfortable saying, I want to live an abundant life. That also means I want- to make more money and I want to have something that goes beyond average because again, you can't give what you don't have. What I'm saying yeah. is your ability to earn, your ability to be prosperous, your ability to sustain that all comes from within. That's all true. of it, all of it. It's true. And I think going back to what we were talking about with prosperity, it's about an abundant mindset. Yes. Because joy, if you think abundantly- You can't be prosperous without joy. It doesn't yeah. exist. You can be wealthy or rich or have a lot of money. What? How are you? Because you can parse hairs with all these terms, right? But if you are, if you don't have joy, and you, that's not freedom, because freedom is prosperity. So when you're working with your client, is there a particular? And of course, everyone's different. But is there a particular theme or challenge that comes up a lot that you find that? they're all struggling with in one way or another? A lot of it is that judgment that you're talking mm -hmm. about and they don't understand. And there's a million different terms for it. It shows up as judgment. It shows up, you're either judging others or you're judging yourself too harshly. Really understanding how to get out of your comfort zone and understanding, like people don't really understand how much our body runs our lives. I'm too tired, I'm too this. And it's just Getting out of your, your comfort zone. Your body isn't what we tell ourselves, right? Sometimes it's just the story. But it's your body telling your mind, mm. right? Your body is telling your mind. So you have a head, you have a head brain, you have a heart brain, and you have a gut brain. But getting out of your comfort zone shows up physiologically the same as danger. Your body doesn't know the difference. Like, mm -hmm. we're going to do something new? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. And it starts talking you out of it. Right. And so once you can tap into your seat of consciousness and you can hear that voice and know that voice is not you, and this is powerful. So the way that I stopped drinking was I actually went back and read my journals, which I had never done before. I was a pretty decent journaler for a long time, but I never went back and read them. I went back and read my journals, Anna, and it said, I wish I didn't drink. I wish I drank less. I wish I, like for years. Wow. And I'm like, wait a minute. And who the hell is saying, oh, just have a glass of wine at the end of the day? It's not a big deal. Who's saying that? It's obviously not me. Obviously, my deepest desire is to not. Wow, that's powerful. And so then that's the first time where I was. Re and meanwhile, I've been meditating for 15, 16, 17, 18 years at that point. And I still had never fully tapped into my seat of consciousness or was able to. There's a great book. Do you know Phil Stutz? Did you not? Okay. He's an amazing psychologist. He's like Jonah Hills and a lot of psychologists and stars. He has a book called The Tools and he calls that voice part X. So part X shows up and starts talking you out of all of your deepest desires. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that's the biggest thing that I recognize with everybody. They don't understand that voice is not them. Some of them don't even hear it. I remember the first time I heard it so loudly 
it was talking me out of something. And I was like, what? I had never actually heard it. Deepak it Chopra of- talks about this a lot. And that space that you yeah. create, that is really where you are. It's yeah. not all these other voices. Yeah. And that's just down that's and like it a little blue, blue or straight. You know, we're talking to ourselves all day long and we take on these different perceptions as we do that. And it's really when you can quiet down and I love the fact that you were able to go back in your journals and see the cry for yeah. help from yourself and realize how you were masking that. Yes. So having that business blow up, literally, and that's the, the biggest lesson that I have learned, right? I know who I am. I know why I'm here. But I also know that everything is always working out for me. And yes. so we may not think so in the moment. And it's what is this? Why is it instead of getting into that victim mode of like, why is this happening to me? You just know that whatever the outcome is. And I've learned that like my younger daughter a couple of weeks ago had like just a week, like the car is not working. Then she can't find her keys. Yeah. And then there was like one thing I was like, I have a feeling you were saved from a major car accident and all like you have no idea. And in full transparency, I had my cup ran over a couple of weeks ago and I was at that burnout stage and yeah. just feeling overwhelmed by a lot of things that I had on my plate, a lot of things I was working with, even just balancing. Cause again, there's that myth, right? Trying to balance a lot of stuff going on, full family life, nothing tragic, just a lot of things. And I realized as I was getting overwhelmed that I had to remember that I'm supported. Mm-hmm. I have the support of, I believe the support of the universe. I believe yeah. that I have what, it, what I need. And if I don't have it at this moment, I can connect with it. Mm-hmm. And that we have to take a deep breath sometimes. And we yes. have to say that we trust what's happening around us. But it's hard. It's hard when you're in it because you don't always see it. Right? But that's when we get on the yeah. other side of it, we look back and, oh, that's what was happening. I but was- what happens when you take that deep breath is you're connecting to your seat of consciousness. You're connecting to whatever you want to call it, the universe, God, your higher power, right. right? You're connected and you are then fully loved and supported. And that's when people have to understand, I feel so good after yoga. I feel so good after running. Yeah, because you stopped thinking about all this external for me it's true anyway i stepped out of the merry-go-round of constant the whirlwind of constant Mm -hmm. i gotta do this i gotta do that why is it this working how do i do this better who needs my help how constant and you get out of that and you get back into your body yes that's one of the things i love about yoga is i can connect with my body and my spirit i mean I, i have to tell you everyone listening to this you should play this again Because I think we have dropped a lot of nuggets in this. If you really go back and listen to Jennifer, she's given you a lot of amazing things to think about, to write about, to act on. You you too, you are as well. We could run the world, Adam. We can, we do. That's the thing. I think that's a whole other conversation too. I think as women, we listen, no disrespect to our men listening, but women have this amazing ability to connect with different aspects of their life very naturally and even subconsciously. And I think that we do run the world in a, in, in a lot of ways. We just have to acknowledge it more. And there's a lot of power in this conversation. I hope people can go back and pull out what was the most important piece for them. And as I know we're running out of time, but as we do start to wrap up our conversation today, Is there a question you wish I'd asked that I haven't asked you yet? What would you want to be able to share with the listeners? No, I just hope that they walk away with that. There is everything that you want is already within you. Mm -hmm. Everything you desire, everything you can, and even beyond what you can desire or dream about or think about. It's so huge. It's infinite. And that's it. That's the, that's my mission right there. That's why. I do the things that I do and want to continue to open up more time and space for coaching and teaching because I think that there's such an opportunity to help people connect with their full potential, understand what their purpose is in life because we all have one and to really step out of that, 
I don't know, the, the enemy of greed is good, right? Like feeling yeah. like, oh, it's good, everything's okay. But what if it could be bigger and better? And not to be afraid of it, to really look at what is the fullest expression of yourself? What does that even mean for you? For me, it's joy and freedom. That's where I want to live. That's where I'm living. That's what I know I can share with other people. That's what I know what I can help people tap into. I'm so in integrity when I can say that, know that, and live that life. And I'm so grateful for that. It doesn't matter that it, it happened at, in my 50s. It's even better because- Oh, yeah. You can be to someone in their 20s. Like, you don't have to. You can tap right now. You can be there and you can get it. I have two things I offer for free. On Mondays, I do a mindset reset where I'm literally like yeah, helping people to prime, visualize, breathe and do things to start their week off. And then on Fridays, which I'm going to invite you to come on, I'm going to, we're going to get a date after we hang up. I do something called empower hour, which is actual coaching on business skills, business building, of course, with a little soulful prosperity and some oh, mojo yeah. thrown right. in. Your and so can't grow if you're not growing. So yeah. if, you go to, if you go, just, you can email me at jenniferMar.com or you can go to jenniferMar.com slash schedule. I will do a free soulful prosperity session with you. We do not have to work together. My mission is literally to help a million over a million people. So if that's helped to point you to another coach or to read a different book or whatever, that's what it is. And whoever I'm meant to work with will end up working with yes. me. We'll put all of those links in the show notes too for everyone. Well, and I we're think that when you're going to be my guest. I, I would love to be, and I look forward to that. And I know that you've helped a lot of people just through this conversation. And mm -hmm. that's the beauty of stepping out of the shadows and getting into conversations, right? It doesn't mean you have to have a coaching business. Doesn't mean you have to have a TV show or a nope. podcast or whatever, right? Just a conversation with one person and what that does to give them something to think about, give them hope, give them support, inspiration, encouragement, right? Then what they do with that is amazing. And they could go on to impact and influence thousands of people that we may never know about. That's why I love this platform is that I trust there's this huge ripple effect coming off of it every week. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Here today. thank you. Thank you, my friend. This was so awesome. I really appreciate you. Everyone, I'm sure, as I said, you got a lot out of our conversation. So connect with Jen and definitely take advantage of those resources and namaste. Namaste.